I just jumped out of war here, and today I want to have a, a quick chat with you guys about my schedule over the next week, um, specifically in terms of uh, a live stream, a 24 hour live stream that I'm doing, and in terms of Rise of the Republic for Rome 2. So, really quickly, with 24 hour live stream, you guys asked me to do it, well, some of you guys during my Twitch live stream asked me to do it. Um, about a week ago, I put a donation goal down to, to justify doing it, and you guys absolutely smashed that out in half the time that I was expecting it to, to be done. And so I have to, you know, obviously honor my word with that and uh, do a 24 hour live stream. And um, I'm going to start that 24 hour live stream on Sunday, the 5th of August um, at 12 p.m. So that's midday, my time. So that's Australia, Brisbane time. Obviously, you guys can figure out what that time is respective to you. Just Google it. It should be pretty easy. Um, and it will continue forward until Monday, 12 p.m. Um, the 6th of August. So during that 24 hour period, I'll be on Twitch. There'll be no, you know, long term breaks. The only breaks I'll have are, you know, to, to uh, have a quick, you know, meal, drink, or take a piss, that kind of stuff. Um, but I won't be, you know, taking an hour off or anything like that, or having anyone sub in and take over during that 24 hour period. It'll be 24 hours pretty much straight of me playing games, communicating with you guys. Now the first 12 hours will probably be okay, but I imagine I'm gonna to start to get pretty damn exhausted after 18 hours. So maybe that'd be around the time you wanna step in. So around about the time of midnight of, uh, of Monday, that's probably when, because you know most people want to watch people suffer. That's just the, that's just what, what we like. That'll be when I'm, I'll probably really be struggling to to keep playing. But I'll commit to it, and I'll stick it out for the full 24 hours. Now my preparation for that will be on the Saturday beforehand. I'm gonna make sure that I'm, I eat well, sleep well, drink well, that I take care of my bodies, and I'll probably uh, not play video games all day. To, you know, in order to prepare. So I'm in the best possible shape to actually make it to the 24 hours. Because it's, it's hard to, to play video games for a full 24 hours. Uh, especially when you're an old fuck like me. I'm not that old, but I'm getting there. Anyway, so also during that uh, live stream, I will be giving away the, the Civ 6 code for, um, that I have for, um, for Civ 6. That was given to me by 2K Games for the head-to-head uh, the -head that I did with, uh, with SimSy. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is Rise of the Republic for Rome 2. So this is more of a manager expectations um, explanation with this. Um, I know I know most of you understand the situation pretty well, but there's a few of you that don't understand the situation at all, and maybe because you've just started following me, or maybe you weren't paying attention during the time, and it's absolutely fine. I'm happy to explain this stuff again. Um, but basically, I've been getting a lot of messages from people asking me, you know, am I going to cover it? Why why aren't I talking about it? Uh, am I going to release videos? When, when am I going to release videos on Rise of the Republic? So, so something you need to understand is that I'm actually blacklisted from Creative Assembly due to the stuff that went down during Thrones of Britannia. I did not play ball with them very well during that. I don't regret any of the things I said about it because it turned out to not be a very good Total War game and I was basically the only one that called them out on it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but um, when it comes to it, I don't don't expect me to be covering this at the same time as the other Total War YouTubers. Most of them, I believe, have already got access to Rise of the Republic, and I like I don't know exactly when they're going to be releasing videos. But just based on my experience with CA, they're probably going to be releasing videos very soon, like in the next day or so. Now I won't have access to it, so please don't bombard me with messages with like, why aren't you playing it? Because I, I won't I won't be able to have it. You know, I, I can't do, I can't, it's out of my control on this. Um, and that being said, I don't want early access. I'm absolutely fine with doing this when it comes out. I think I prefer that. My mental state has been so much better over the past month than it was the previous six months before that. So anyway, I will be purchasing and playing Rise of the Republic when it comes out, but I'm not going to rush content out, which means it might be a day, a day or two before you actually see a Let's Play of it on, on this channel. And the reason for that is that, again, I'm trying to learn from my experience, experiences and the mistakes I've made in the past. Specifically, that I can draw attention to is the Dark Elf campaign for Mortal Empires, where I was only given about an hour to play around with it before I was able to release videos, and therefore I rushed the content, I was frustrated, and I released bad content. I don't want to release bad content anymore, I don't want to release content where I'm pissy all the time. 
Obviously, some I get pissy pretty quickly, uh, but at least at the start, let's try and start it in a good mood. So I often consider my Dark Elf campaign that I did for, for Mortal Empires to be a classic example of, of where I fucked up. Um, and so I want to avoid doing that. So probably expect a Rise of the Republic Let's Play around 11th or 12th of August, okay? If you want to see if it's any good before then, obviously check out uh, some of the other YouTubers. Um, I think... Um, checking out Jackie Fish, maybe Lionheart will get it. I, I don't know because he's on holiday at the moment. Um, those, are, those are sort of like the two campaign guys that you, I think you can trust. Uh, look, I don't, I don't know exactly who's got it, but, but really any of the Total War YouTubers are trustworthy. Uh, there's really no Total War YouTuber that I can say, yeah, don't follow this guy, this guy's scum. Everyone, I've always said that everyone in the Total War community in terms of the YouTube side of things, has always been very good. So you can trust any of the other ones, I think. You know, everyone's going to have their own personal preferences. Now, in addition to that, you know, what to expect out of my campaign for Rise of the Republic. Again, I want people to manage their expectations. This is not going to be an epic playthrough of Rise of the Republic. Uh, because I understand Rome 2, and I, you know, I recently played the Ancestral update for, for it, and they didn't fix any of the issues that I have with the game. And my issues with the game are basic mathematical ones. And it's, it's boring for people to hear about this kind of stuff, and I understand that, which is why I don't really want to go on about it too much. But, and this is the point where if you don't want to hear about this, click off the video because there's nothing else after this. I want to leave this bit to last. But if you want to understand as to why I do things the way I do when I play this game, then this, this might give you a bit of understanding about it. Um, first, just want to say about Rome 2, I think it's a good Total War game. I definitely don't think it's the best, and I don't think it's better than Rome 1. Um, but I have got 2,600 hours clocked on this game, and I have had quite a bit of enjoyment playing this game. However, when I played my Marco Mani This Is Total War campaign, I reached a bit of an epiphany about halfway through the campaign, which was, I think I'm done with this game. And I did say that I would probably would never cover Rome 2 again after that Mark Amani campaign unless they released a campaign pack. And the only real reason I would release a, another campaign is just because new, new stuff equals views. That's basically it. Am I looking forward to Rise of the Republic? Not really. Do I think it's going to give me a whole new experience of Rome 2? Probably not. Because I don't think the basic mathematics, the basic maths of strategy in this game is flawed and I don't think it's fixed and I want to explain a little bit as to why I why I know it's flawed okay so um, everything in a video game can be broken down into basic mathematical equations you know obviously from my looking out it all looks very complex but as you break a complex problem down it's just a series of smaller simpler uh, mathematical equations and ever even this image here image in front of the tile thing. You can break that down into ones and zeros and basic mathematical equations if you have the, you know, the effort to really break it down. You know, millions of little equations. Now, the same is true when it comes to the balancing of, of stats, of units and buildings and whatnot when it comes to the gameplay. And when it comes to that, CA have done a very, very bad job of Rome 2 and really a lot of the Total War games in terms of, of um, the balancing. Shogun 2, um, Rome 2, Attila, Thrones of Britannia, Warhammer 1. It's getting a little bit better with Warhammer 2, but it's still not there yet. Um, the the math is wrong, I think, and it's unbalanced and it's easy to it's easy to manipulate if if you understand it. Now I think that the reason why a lot of people don't manipulate it is, and a, a lot of people do as well, is because I think a lot of people play this game and they don't think about the you know the min maxing of of that, that kind of stuff. Um, people often say, I've got a very analytical mind, maybe I'm fucking autistic, I don't know. Um, but when I play these games, I'm mostly crunching numbers constantly. Everything is a, is a numbers decision. Am I going to make a profit from this decision or not? Am I going to win? Is this decision going to benefit me or not? I never think to, oh, this is going to be a fun battle, this is going to be epic or anything like that. Because that kind of stuff has never interested me. The, the reason I got into Total War was because the, 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 when I first purchased Medieval 1 Total War, the thing that grabbed me the most on that thing was the number 10,000. That was the thing that drew me. 10,000, up to 10,000 men on a battlefield. Ooh, numbers. I'll, I'll, I'll play around with that. 
That was it. I never looked at it and thought epic battles or anything like that. It always comes down to number crunching. Obviously, that makes me boring to some people, and you know I understand that. And what can I what can I say? That's just how I work. But anyway, when it comes to Rome 2, and here's why it's unbalanced, and especially on legendary difficulty. Now, of course, legendary difficulty is going to be more challenging than the other difficulties. But the problem is, it's frustrating when you just understand that the the balancing act of it is just just fundamentally flawed. It is bottom heavy top light in that the beginning of the campaign is ridiculously hard compared to the end campaign if you can get to late campaign you will not struggle on legendary difficulty and you'll find it basically indistinguishable from easy difficulty and that is due to mathematical balancing they did not balance the stuff correctly for late game stuff and the funny thing is is that creative assembly it has actually been something for them that a goal for them They've even stated it, that they want people to play to the late game. But one of the reasons that they don't play the late game is because it's too easy by that point. And one of the reasons it's too easy by that point is because it's not scaled mathematically correctly. And I'm I'm getting to the point eventually, but I just want to... I need to lay the foundations down because I'm, I, it can be very complex for some people to understand. It's super easy for me to understand, but, but that's because I've been playing this game for thousands of hours. Anyway, so what the hell am I talking about? Basically... The numbers that add to the the, uh, the bonuses and penalties at the beginning of the campaign on the campaign map and on the battle map do not translate in a meaningful way. And so it's sort of like a dice roll where you are 80% uh, likely to roll a, a particular number and all the other numbers are very rare to... Um, very rare to, 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 um, to show up. Basically, think of it as an unbalanced dice. Okay, so... Take an example. I don't have to get the exact numbers because it's just an example to help you understand. You take a beginning unit, early game unit, of course, you can look at their stats, right? Let's just say it's Hastati, okay? And I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna read out the actual stats because I don't need to, I'm just making a point here. Let's just say, say that its beginning morale is 20. That's its beginning morale. And its beginning attack is 20. Let's just say all of its attacks, all of its stats are 20, okay? And then let's compare it to a late game unit and say Praetorian Guard or whatever. Yeah, Praetorian Guard, whatever. And let's just say all of its unit stats are 100, okay? Now, the problem is on Legendary Difficulty, the buffs and debuffs, which are hidden in the code, but they're there, I don't know exactly what they are, are additive and subtractive. They're not multiplicative and divisive, uh, uh, divisible, whatever, which it should be. Now, I'll explain exactly why that's a problem late game and a problem early game and why it's, it doesn't work okay so let's just talk about debuffs for our troops you play on legendary difficulty you're probably going to get a morale debuff i don't think you get an attack and defense debuff but let's just talk about morale debuff now because it's subtractive let's just say on legendary difficulty you have a minus five morale debuff so your unit that has 20 morale goes down to 15. It's lost 25% of its morale because of the difficulty level, making it goddamn useless in battle. You'll notice this with trolls in Warhammer Total War. Units that have really good attack stats but are fucking garbage in morale. They don't last long in combat. Legendary difficulty when you pile on the, uh, the negative debuff, these things run away before they even get into combat sometimes without even losing a single unit. And you can sit there going, why? Why did that happen? Well, it's because of the unbalance. Anyway, then you look at a late game unit, right? And you look at its morale stats and it's got minus five. So it's gone from 100 to 95. So at the end game where it should be getting more challenging, it's actually easier because your, your debuff is only 5%, whereas at the beginning of the game, it's 25%. That's why these Total War games at the beginning of the game are very, very difficult but at the end game, people are just like, there's no difficulty left. I can't tell the difference between normal difficulty. That's because the difference between normal difficulty and legendary difficulty at the late game is nearly non-existent. It's arbitrary. Now, you take an enemy unit as well, and you take a unit with the exact same stats, 20 early game unit, 100 late game unit, and you add on buffs to them on legendary difficulty on the battle map. Let's just say we're adding on plus 10 attack, plus 10 morale, plus 10 everything, okay? Well, that unit that has 20 stats now becomes 30. You've buffed their stats by 50%. Your unit that started off with a 25% debuff is going up against a unit with a 100 with a 50% buff. Okay, the clash is going to be 
it's one sided completely this is a unit that's supposed to be exactly the same strength on legendary difficulty will not trans you'll just get rolled over and this is why a lot of people just lose campaigns at the beginning but here's the thing those buffs and debuffs don't translate on auto resolve and so this is why you'll see me spam a unit that has you know crap stats at the beginning of the campaign and just auto resolve because i've just wiped out that legendary difficulty debuff and then late game unit as well if they've got a plus 10 bonus there's there's so very little difference between a late game unit strength and a you know on the enemy side and the beginner side this is also the same thing with public order the beginning of the game because everything's ad additive or subtractive the the minus 10 and the minus 8 which doesn't really the more uh, the um public order um debuff is different in Rome 2. I, I almost forget exactly what it is because it's so arbitrary. You know, just take Total War Tiller, minus 8. Well, as you as you build up the settlement, you start building on public order bonuses and start researching stuff. That minus 8 becomes obsolete. Comes absolutely nothing by late game. It's really, really important at the beginning of the game, but late game is just, it's just nothing. Because it's not percentage based. It's not like 20% extra buffs from, you know, uh, debuffs from from negative effects from culture or anything like that. It's additive or subtractive. That's why the beginning of the campaign is difficult and the end of the campaign is just not at all. And so because I know these things, this is why you'll see me spam the you know, Roaria at the beginning of the campaign and just roll over everything with no difficulty because I understand the maths behind things is completely flawed. Um, and it's, it's, it's the same with uh, Rome 2, Attila, and Thrones of Britannia, um, which is why there's no challenge for someone like me. Um, and the problem with that then is that most people watch a campaign and they only watch the beginning Most people just watch the beginning which is the most boring part because they're watching me just number crunching Auto resolve auto resolve auto resolve and so I had the name legend of total auto resolve which you know what I don't have a problem with um, But you know they don't get to see the late game where I'm using units in manually resolve because only the late game units are viable to use in, in manually resolve battles and so it's like it doesn't translate to good content for me so I just want people to understand that Rise of the Republic is going to be no different when it comes to this. You're going to see me order resolve at the beginning and at the end of the campaign I'm going to be fighting battles manually because it's the same buffs and debuffs this, as far as what I expect as we've always seen. What they need to be doing is making things percentage based, making things scale, you know. Instead of a minus 5 penalty, make it a 5% penalty. That way it's even across the board. I mean obviously the late game units are still going to be better than early game units. But it's going to it's going to close the gap in debalance in the balancing thing. It's a basic mathematical equation that they just they just don't seem to care about. Anyway, that's my take on all of that. I hope you guys understood exactly what I was rambling on about. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you guys on Sunday for the 24-hour live stream, and I'll just I'll do the best I can when it comes to Rise of the Republic. But really, don't get your hopes up for it being like the best campaign that's ever been released on my camp on my channel. I'm really hoping to get the whole thing over with in five episodes. Anyway, that's the end of this one, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.